Welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and lenders so you can learn all the secrets to getting your projects funded and scale your portfolio. Learn about fix and flip loans, burr financing, rental, fix to rent, commercial, multifamily bridge loans, business loans, and so much more. And now, your host, Bo Eckstein. Hello, everyone. And today's episode, we are going to talk about construction, completion, financing, and how you can prepare if you run short on a project. Because I run into a lot of borrowers who are looking for additional capital on a pro project that they've run out of funds for whatever reason. And I wanted to just talk about how to put yourself in the best light possible for the lender or underwriter to take a look and to see if it's a deal that can be lent on based on capital in the deal and, and future value and all that good stuff. So let's uh, start with um, what the general questions would be from an underwriter lender. Um, obviously, when did, you, when did you purchase the property and for how much? So what, when, what date did you purchase the property on? Was it a year ago? Was it a few months ago? And how much did you pay for the property? Often we wanna see a line item breakdown of what you've put into the property so far. So we're gonna ask for the uh, closing statement when you bought the property, and then a spreadsheet um, of all the capital that you put into the property. Um, obviously we're gonna need a current statement from your lien holder if the property has a lien on it from your mortgage provider. And um, if that had a construction reserve on that first loan, we're gonna to wanna to see what's been drawn out on that loan. So copy the closing statement, copy of a breakdown of what's been put into the property so far, copy of your permits and plans if applicable, and then um, a breakdown on a line item budget on the cost to complete the project. So what, what's outstanding? Let's say it's $100,000 to complete, we need a detailed budget for that. And then um, we also want to know what your opinion of finished value is going to be. When it's complete, what's the property going to be, what's it going to appraise for? Um, also, it'd be good if you have a, um, a verification of track record, meaning how many projects have you done in the past, in the last three years? We like to look back and see if you've got a track record or not. In addition to that, um, like a letter of explanation on why you're over budget, what happened, was it? Uh, overages in construction? Was it uh, the, um, the time to get permits too long? Uh, the time to get permits took too long? We're gonna wanna know that. Um, and then also it's good if you provide comps. Here's the best comps when it's finished, this is what it should sell for. Or if this is a property to keep as a rental, provide some rental comps. We're also gonna need to know what the ARV is as well, but you know, be as detailed as possible on that. The other considerations, um, when financing a project that's stalled or a broken project that uh, there's construction started, one of the big consideration is, is, is to be able to get an, an Alta title policy with mechanical lien endorsements. Because the risk of a contractor coming back and putting a mechanics lien on the pro property, the lenders typically want a Alta policy with mechanical lien endorsements. And also in addition to that, uh, the other thing is, is you're going to want lien releases from your contractor. So if you're running into a situation where you're short. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Are you looking for funding? Are you getting frustrated trying to find a lender? Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and click the Get Funding button. Complete the simple form and schedule a free phone consultation with one of our placement specialists. We have a proprietary directory of funding partners that can help you get the funding you need. It's fast and easy to explore the options available for your specific needs. Don't wait. Visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com and get connected connected on funds and you're going to be looking for financing these are the things you should really really keep track of in the beginning i mean you should be getting lien release waivers from your contractors and subs anyway uh, but uh, it's it's really critical to get financing and to make sure we can get 
title insurance because a lot of lenders won't lend unless they can get this ALTA policy and the, and the correct endorsements. From there, once we get the application and we put together these documents, we're going to, uh, when it looks like it's a deal that can be done, uh, there's enough capital in the deal, there's enough room when the deal's finished, there's enough equity or future equity, we're gonna then order a third party appraisal as well as a third party um, inspection and uh, construction inspection. So we're gonna take your budget, your plans, we're gonna send them to our third party construction inspector. They're gonna come meet with you at the property and they're gonna say, if they think they're going to do a detailed report and say, okay, this hundred thousand um, dollars that uh, is realistic or is not realistic, and they break it down, and and it's not it's not what you can finish it for. It's what the average person or average contractor would would take to finish the project. That's what we need. So keep that in mind. It's very important that um, you leave enough, even if you can do it for less, because you got your own subs and you've been doing it for a while we're going to need a budget set that's realistic for a normal contractor to finish it. So keep that in mind when you're uh, applying for a loan or looking for a loan, that it's not what you can do for, it's what is realistic that project can be finished for. So that's kind of um, the fundamentals of a construction completion loan. Also, um, sometimes we run into loans, re loan requests where borrowers Bought the, bought the property and they have started demoing while the plans were in the uh, approval department with the city or county. And their, their thought process was now I'm gonna, once I get plan approval, I'm taking this thousand square foot house and I'm gonna convert it to a 2,500 square foot house. But remember, the title issues we're always gonna um, we're always gonna need to get uh, the title insurance policy. So if you start work, just make sure you're getting lien release waivers and so forth. And also, if you've only owned the property for a short amount of time, a lot of the funds and investors um, will will lend just off purchase price. So that's why the questions I asked in the beginning those are the ones that we're gonna like dive into right right away. You know, when did you buy it? What did, you, what did you pay for the property? A lot of people, um, they'll come for a construction completion loan and they're gonna say, well, the ARV is $2 million. So what does it matter what I bought it for? As the investors, they wanna protect, the investor's job or the lender's job is to perfect, uh, protect the investor's capital that's lending the money. So although there might be a big equity cushion in the project, they still wanna make sure there's enough skin in the game and there's enough, uh, future equity as well. But that's the reason we're asking these questions. So I hope this helps. So if you have any construction completion questions or ground up construction uh, loan requests or any questions going forward on the process of, uh, of getting these loans funded in a timely manner and put yourself in the best light possible, please reach out. As always, I appreciate you for tuning in and please share this with uh, people that might get some uh, might enjoy this podcast and I'll continue to interview and, and bring up topics that will be of interest to you. Have a great day and I will talk to you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. For show notes and useful resources, please visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. For questions or comments, email info at InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please share it with your network. Until next time.